This is a Fox News alert. Nobody's career has been boosted more by the Me Too movement than New York Attorney General Eric Schneiderman. He has loudly pursued a civil rights case against disgraced film mogul Harvey Weinstein. But now, one of those ironies that can only happen in 2018, a new well-sourced New Yorker piece says that four women claim Schneiderman may be the worst abuser of them all. Two of the accusers have made their allegations publicly. They say Schneiderman hit, slapped, and choked them. Both say he threatened to kill them like a lunatic. One says he warned he could have her followed and tap her phone if she defied him. Obviously, these are just allegations. Schneiderman has denied them. But if they are true, one person will certainly be vindicated. President Trump tweeted this in 2013 with remarkable, almost spooky prescience. Wiener gone, Spitzer is gone. Next will be lightweight AG Eric Schneiderman. Is he a crook? Wait and see. Worse than Spitzer or Wiener. Whoa! Either he's amazingly lucky on Twitter, or you should ask the president what numbers to pick in Lotto tomorrow. Well, every year, the government of Mexico gets a huge pile of cash from the U.S. government. In 2016, it was $181 million. The year before that, it was $338 million. Just send it over there. What do we get in return for that money? Well, Mexico hasn't done anything to stop illegal immigration. Actually, they abet it. But that's not the only problem with Mexico. Mexico is the biggest source of heroin brought into the United States. It's driving an epidemic that is killing tens of thousands every year. It's also a massive supplier of methamphetamine, cocaine, and every narcotic you can imagine. Why are we subsidizing this? Christina Hagan is an Ohio State representative making a run for Congress. She wants to know what the point of our foreign aid to Mexico is, considering the drug crisis and their role in it. Christina Hagan joins us tonight. Christina Hagan, thanks for coming on. I appreciate that. Um, so Absolutely. what's what's your proposition here that we should stop foreign aid to Mexico? I think that we're in a position, especially in Ohio, where the opioid and heroin epidemic has completely overwhelmed our communities. And unless we hit Mexico right in their pocketbook, we're going to continue to see these drug lords trafficking into our communities. Ninety percent of opioids are coming directly from Mexico. So unless we make them take it seriously, they're never going to. So I've interviewed countless immigration advocates who say the same thing every time, which is it's a demand problem. The appetite for drugs of American drug users is basically pulling the heroin across our southern border into the U.S. It's our fault. We're the cause of this crisis. So I look at it as we need to make it less economic for their drug lords to traffic these drugs into our United States. And if we have a border wall, that creates an immediate problem to them providing the supply to the United States. We're throwing all types of dollars at this in the state of Ohio. Our law enforcement's involved. Our educators are involved. Our Every front is working on this. I think that we can no longer be on defense. We have to go on offense. Building the wall makes sense. Taxing remittances. Stopping the foreign aid that we currently give them. Their government will take it seriously when we make them take it seriously. And so I just think it's not necessarily only supply and demand. It's what we allow for the Mexican government to get away with. We've allowed for them to not take their drug lords and their drug cartels seriously. And they even allow, you know, South America, Central America to continue to funnel people into the United States that are harming our communities and our families. And we have to take a strong Americans first stance. When you flood a community with heroin, people get addicted to it. The more you pump in, the more addicts you get, and then they lose their capacity for free will. They can't make clear decisions. So the supply and demand argument, as you just pointed out, is insane and it's offensive, mm -hmm. uh, actually. How would we feel if another country were doing this? If South Korea, I mean, pick one, pick a country, Malaysia, were sending millions of people across the border illegally, taxing social services, and then sending narcotics in that were killing tens of thousands of people a year, would we see them as a close ally if they were doing that? Absolutely not. And as a congresswoman, I'll take this seriously. I'll lead on this issue because I know American lives are being lost and the Mexican government is doing absolutely nothing to stop it from happening. We have to stop the foreign aid of over $320 million a year going to them. Uh, the fact that their communities and their economy is thriving because they have legal and illegal immigrants coming to the United States and setting up an economic basis to provide for their families while our families are being crushed by opioid abuse. Uh, tells me we need to take this seriously. We need to be tough on them. We need to tax remittances. Yeah. And we need to stop all foreign aid immediately. This is ludicrous. And stop feeling guilty for criticizing a country that is hurting us. So I agree with exactly. you there. Th thank you very much for coming on. Absolutely. Great. Thank you.
Last year, they came for Civil War statues. Now the mob demands more. George Washington University students say America's colonial period must be purged from memory, too. Huh. It's confusing, but we're going to try to explain it to you after the break. <laughs>